because God does great things, amen? You know, we worship God with our spirit and our mind and our soul, but this morning we're gonna worship him with our giving, amen? Goodness, we love you, Father, so much. We are excited to be in your house today. And Father, I pray your spirit will come into this place and it will touch every mind, it will touch every heart. And Lord, you will refine us in our hearts as we give this morning. Help us to learn the principle of giving back unto the God who has given so much to us. Lord, we tithe, we worship with offerings, and Father, we come today to give you the glory and the praise because, Father, you have never, ever failed, and you have done great things in our lives. We love you today, Father, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Would you say amen? amen. Let's come and worship him with our giving this morning. Amen? Come on. Amen. Give him praise one more time as you come this morning. Amen. He's worthy of it. Ah. It's going to be a good day. Do you agree? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. How many believe he's coming back someday? Amen. Are you ready? Hallelujah. To 
be the one the Lord's calling for in these last and evil days. The one called to be a witness to some soul who's lost their way. Then to be used as his instrument so men may see and know that he's faithful to his promise that he made a long time ago. For he's coming back again. I feel this. Yes, he's coming back. He's coming back again. Yeah. 
Yes, he's coming back. He's coming back again. Can we lift our hands across this place? Amen. Father, when we see you face to face, Lord, we will bow, we will worship, we will kneel. And we will worship you in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you thankful this morning that you are forever his? You know, our relationships in this world and in this life sometimes come and go. You have friends for seasons, you have relationships for moments, but our relationship with him is everlasting. And you may be in this place this morning, feel broken, feel lost, feel insecure. But I want you to know if you will surrender to him this morning, that you can be forever his. You see, this life is just a vapor, the word of God says. And in a twinkling of an eye, he will return. And are you ready? Are you ready for that return? And if you're not, by all means, before you leave this place today, turn your heart to him. The day will be coming when this place will be filled with capacity and it will not be with believers, but it will be with those that are left behind. They will say, Lord, give me one more chance. Today is your chance. Seek him while he still may be found this morning. Save me, and I will be. 
and I will be forever yours. You made me free to be forever yours. Come on, sing that to him. You say minister to the king this morning. Worship the king this morning. Proclaim this to your master this morning. You're worthy, Lord. You made me free to be forever yours. So I Closer to Him. That's been in my spirit all week. Is magnifying Him, getting closer, 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 closer. You, you know, when you when you take a child and you say, "Hey, hey, hey, buddy, hey, darling, look up, look at that airplane. You see that airplane? It looks so small from up there. You see the vapor and the trip, but but that airplane looks so small. But then when you take the kids to the airport or the air show for the very first time." You say, hey, now let's go through this airplane. And they're mesmerized by how big it is. Some of you are looking at God like he's a, a million miles away. And you just need to get to the air show this morning and say, Father, I know you're here with me. How many's ready to go to the airport this morning? So this morning, if you have a need, if you, if you need to surrender your life to Christ, I still feel that in my spirit. There's someone here this morning. Before the message, you're going to surrender yourself. You're going to come down here. Somebody's going to walk you through what it means to know Jesus. Or you're going to rededicate your life this morning. I believe that in my heart. There's someone here. Maybe two or three or a dozen. I don't know. But as we continue to worship, take that burden that's on you. Give it to the Lord. And realize He is amazing. He is incredible. He created the universe, the expanse that we still haven't found the end to. That's how big He is. So if he can do all that, what can he do for you this morning? Amen. Let's hold on. Let's hold on to him as we worship this morning. Won't you come? Won't you come? You save me. You save me. And I will be forever yours. Bring it to the Lord. You made and I will be forever yours. Thank you, Jesus. You save me, and I will be forever yours. Thank you, Lord. You made me free to be forever 
one more time. I will. And I will love you, God. I will stand in a worship. I will give you praise. For you, my hands I raise. I will love you, God. I will stand in a worship. to you this morning we lift sister Catlett to you today God Lord touch this infection in her body the patriarch of this church for many many years God Lord honor her faithfulness this morning God mend her and touch her Lord we pray today, Lord, for Brother Larry Benson's mother-in-law, God. They have decisions to make today, Lord. I pray that you give them wisdom and discernment today, God. A dear friend of Bethesda, Lord, I pray, God, that you would be their portion today. Lord, do what only you can do. Pray for Sister Denise today and Randy. Lord, as they said goodbye to their sister, I pray, God, that you would sustain them this week. Strengthen them, Lord. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We pray for Martha's family. They have several needs, God. Just slip your hand to them if you have a loved one or a need. Just surrender that person or personally. If you have a personal need to the Lord, give it to him today. Take that burden to the Lord. Leave it there. Lord, I pray for the request pertaining to my family, Lord. You know them. And Lord, I trust you. 
And I know you're able and I know that you'll do only what you can do. Thank you, Lord, that Nate's procedure was successful. That, Lord, he is healing. We pray for our pastors as they continue on their sabbatical, Lord, that you would be with them, strengthen them, encourage them. Lord, we love our pastors. We're so thankful for the blessing that they are to us. But minister to them. But Lord, this is your church. This is your house. Lord, thank you for coming and ministering to us today. And all God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can sit and give the band a hand at the same time, can't you? Amen. We're blessed. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for the media team and those that are doing Facebook Live and cameras and all that thing. You know, when I was a kid, if you had an overhead projector with plastic sheets, amen. How many had that ministry at one time in your life? Come on, somebody. Amen. Tanya, I believe, amen, back in the day. And then uh, we even go back further, amen. You put that little thing in the back of the pew, amen. Um, they just need to do an updated hymnal with the new songs, and then we could just bust it out and be good. And we mix it up. But things, times have changed, and technology, and here's the deal, church. And we can stay put where we've been as the world progresses. But the Lord is using different ways to get his message out. And so uh, that's why you can go online now. And if you're not here, you can pull up the message. You can watch it. And uh, back in the day, that wasn't the case. You can go on Facebook Live right now. And we're streaming live. And uh, let's everybody wave at our Facebook family. We're glad you're here with us. God bless you. If you are watching live on Facebook, if you just hit that share button. Uh, or just, just reply right now. Let us know you're watching and uh, greet us this morning. And, or uh, if you like something you hear, give a thumbs up or a heart. Nothing like hearts going through the page. Amen. We love Jesus and we love you guys on Facebook. Amen. Honored to have you and uh, glad you could be part of our service today. Amen. Are you ready to get in the word this morning? Yeah, are you? The church that God blesses. How many want to be part of that church? How many are thankful you are part of that church? I believe God has strategically placed Bethesda here. If you haven't heard the story how we ended up on 89th and May, when you have a minute, uh, sit down with Pastor Brown. He has an amazing story of God's faithfulness of how the Lord put this property on his heart years ago. And here we are today. And, um, but the church that God blesses, Brother Michael Bridge did a great, great job last week setting the stage. And, uh, we're going to continue uh, this morning with, get ready for this, Heaven's Guide to Proper Fashion. How many are ready to know? Amen. All these years you've wondered, what should I wear? I'm going to let you know today. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word that you've given to me. Uh, thank you for the inspiration. And Lord, right now I yield myself to you. And uh, once again, I say, anoint me as only you can, because this is your message. I'm your vessel. Just use me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad I wore what I wore today. <laughs> can, can I confess something to you? Even at times, I have to uh, protect myself from being, having a critical spirit. Anybody else? I had two hands. We need an altar call because I believe the enemy would like us to all carry a critical spirit. There have been times that me and Amy, we like to people watch sometimes. Anybody else like to, instead of getting on the roller coaster, put you on a bench while the kids are on the roller coaster and you just like to see who walks by. Anybody else in the house? And um, I'm just going to be transparent to you. And Amy's had to correct me on this. Because I've said this to her. Honey, when they were standing in front of the closet this morning, <laughs> out of all the things they could have grabbed, they chose that. 
And then I have to say, Lord, I'm so sorry, because maybe that's the only that they got. And that's just something I had to give the Lord. I said, shame on me. Get behind me, Satan. Anybody else ever have those thoughts? Just like at the airport, really? Uh, anyway, so I just want to talk about fashion for a moment. Because um, growing up in the 70s and 80s, I've seen a lot of changes when it comes to fashion. 70s and 80s were a great time. I mean, you actually had music back then that people played and sang. Like when you went to a live concert, they were actually playing their instruments and singing. Now you go to a concert, you don't know if it's the, uh, the, uh, the track playing. and You know what I'm saying? Back then, it was them. I mean, it was really good. Anointed, in, uh, if you were at a Christian concert. Um, but even... Uh, even some leaders, get this though, even some leaders of certain denominations have placed tremendous emphasis on outward legalistic standards. How many of you grew up in church even before me, 40s, 50s, 60s, where you walked a straight line when it came into what you wore into the house of God? Uh, for example, when I was growing up uh, in some, some circles, uh, ladies, you didn't cut your hair. Amen. That was your glory. And, and you... It, it was your glory if you let it down, but it was your glory if you got it to heaven. Amen. Either way. I mean, you had it covered both ways. You didn't wear nail polish for a long time on your toes or your fingers. Uh, no makeup. Uh, no lipstick or pants. And I'm not here to put that if you still feel that way. Hey, praise the Lord. Because here's the deal, y'all. We're to work out our own salvation according to the word of God. And if the Lord still puts on your heart, that's the way you want to roll you do it with everything within you. Amen. But as my mama says, if the barn needs painted, paint it. That's how she feels about it. And she's my spiritual mentor. So that's just the way I put it. If you are naturally beautiful and you don't need any help, praise God for the genes that the good Lord gave you. <laughs> Amen. I'm not leaving you out of this either. Men, remember the day where, guess what? That razor was nice and sharp because there wasn't going to be facial hair, especially on the platform. Um, the hair was definitely above the collar and above the ears. But this, you were so hypocritical, though, in the 70s. Let me tell you, because I've got some pictures. Your face was as clean as it could be, but those chops that would come down. <laughs> the, you know what I'm talking about, those sideburns that would go from glory to glory. I, don't, I didn't understand that. When I was a little baby, dad had those chops, man, and he just rubbed those things on my side of my face. I remember I've got pictures to prove it. So growing up in the 70s and 80s, I had my share of pressure and challenges. Can anybody else be there? You know, just trying to figure out what to do. You want to fit in with the culture, but we go to a Pentecostal church. How does this all fit in? But I'll never forget this because I, I was a young kid that always wanted to be with the teenagers. Any other youngins like that? You just want to be with the cool kids. You want to be with the older kids. That's who I was. My parents were youth pastors, so I got to tag along a lot. So if they had the latest fashion, I wanted the latest fashion. I might have been seven, but I wanted what they had. So the first thing I remember I really wanted was this, right? here how many remember your first pair of nikes come on somebody red white and blue salute you and it was a wonderful thing and they just the, your first pair of nikes just something about it back in the 70s amen how, how many remember having to pay that bill moms and dads amen the first pair back, took you back and i remember going to miller's outpost and getting my first pair of these how many had 501 jeans amen come on how many remember mervyn's back in the day if you're from southern california you couldn't have back to school without mervyn's or miller's outpost and then it went to this everybody had different colors of these i had this color how many remember your first pair? Oh, yeah, oh, that too. Yes, that right there. How many remember your first pair of Converse? They're still, in fact, that's one shoe that never goes out of fashion. Mine were blue, but I remember at school, everybody had their different colors, pink and blue and purple and all these different colors. Mine were Dodger blue. Amen. Come on, can I get a witness? And then in the 80s, you had to have this, just like the Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin brothers. Let's show that. You had to have a members-only jacket. How many remember the pressure of having a members-only jacket? Did anybody have a members-only jacket? It must have been a California thing. Okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. But then after that, we went to our parachute pants. How many of you had parachute pants? Come on, somebody. This was a big deal. I'm bringing it back, y'all. I'm not playing this morning. Okay, I'm bringing it to where it was. Now, that was a contradiction, though, because to wear parachute pants in the house of the Lord, I don't know. But then 
everybody had to have this thing on their wristband. Come on, show me. How many had a swatch watch back in the days? You weren't cool if you didn't have a swatch watch. And then those little rubber uh, bands that you put and you, you, um, they, they were black or white, and you had to intermingle them to where they look cool. How many remember those uh, same times? And then I got my first pair of these when these were popular. How many remember their first pair of Reebok? They just had a special softness to them, a special touch that was just unmatched. But then this was the critical moment. I'll never forget that. If I don't, don't show it yet. Don't show it yet, Michael. But if I got down and I started doing this. I can't do it now. But how many ever had to do this to their pants because you had to fit in? You had to roll the pants. Teenagers, I challenge you. I ask you. It'll come back around eventually. Bring it back. Be in front of the curve on this one. Don't wait for California to bring it. Don't wait for New York to bring it. Oklahoma, bring it back. Come on, somebody. Tonight, tonight at youth, I want some pictures, Pastor Josh. But then my life forever changed in the early 90s, and I got my first pair of these. Air Jordans. Those are the number fives, if you don't know. That was the grape color. And forever I was changed. They have a certain smell about them as well. I just like to take Jordans out of the box and smell them. But they're over $100 back then. And now they're like $185, $225. It's crazy. But those are just some of my things in the 80s. But I, I, instead of what I think about fashion growing up, I want to turn to the Word of God to see what the Holy Spirit directs. Because that's pretty important, don't you think? We really want to know what the Holy Spirit thinks about all this. Because he doesn't really care about Jordans or Reeboks or swatch watches or parachute pants. He really cares about your heart. But Paul even had to give instruction in the early church. 1 Timothy 2.9. I'm not picking on the ladies here, but it's interesting what it says uh, in, in 1 Timothy 2.9. I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Now, if you have expensive clothes on this morning or a hairstyle or gold or pearls... He's not saying you can't have that stuff or wear that stuff. He just doesn't want that to be the main essence of who you are. Does that make sense? But I, I want to get that in there. I also want the woman to dress modestly because how many know modest is hottest? Amen. And what we'll wear as adults, our kids will take to the extreme. Now, if we want to go back a verse, and it's not up there, but, man, you're not off the hook here because, actually, he doesn't talk about your clothing there, but he says, I want all men to lift up holy hands. He says, men, I want you to lead the way when it comes to worship by lifting up holy hands. And then he says, oh, by the way, ladies, here you go. It's interesting how Paul, Paul uh, does that. So he's like, men, I want you to lead in worship. I want you to be there. But that's just a little sidebar. But um, in this great book, The Church God Blesses by Pastor Jim Simbola of the Brooklyn Tabernacle, he writes... It is obvious given the moral pollution in our society and the extreme sexuality common in much of the fashion industry, Christian men and women who want to please the Lord often will have to go against the tide. Uh, for what the world calls sensational is often an abomination to our Holy Father. But he goes on to say this. Through the years, a number of visiting pastors and speakers have made interesting remarks about the way the congregation at Brooklyn Tabernacle dresses. It surprised me the first time someone mentioned it, since I had never thought much about it. But similar comments have been repeated many times since. These ministers point out that although the church is located in the inner city and most of its members are not well-to-do, the believers who worship every Sunday in one of our four services look very attractive as a whole. In the general, the ladies come dressed smartly and modestly. The men are well-groomed as their circumstances permit. Many of these pastors have complained to me that in their own churches, this is not the case, an inappropriate and even suggestive attire is commonplace, and people often make little effort to look clean or neat. We all know that God is more interested in the, in the hearts of his people than he is in their outward appearance, but it's probably wisest for us to look the best we can on the outside. Although church should never be a fashion show, inappropriate dress can be both a distraction and not helpful to the worship of God. So I'm here once and for all to settle the fashion debate when it comes to believers. Are you ready? You're not ready for this. But let me say this. Do the best you can. My mama said it this way. Son, if I was going to go meet the president or the queen of England, I'd do the best I could. 
if I was going to have an important meeting with a very important person uh, or a job interview, I'm going to do the best I can. Um, and if I'll do that for them, why shouldn't I at least try for him? Um, so I want to look at that from the aspect, because you, you'll notice even up here on the platform, there's a certain standard that Bethesda has. Um, not once would you can, you can talk to the worship team. Um, do I ever say you have to have this brand, this designer, any of that? But I just say, hey, look, ladies, here it is on paper. This is what we do. And men, this is what we do. Because at the end of the day, this is why we do it. We don't want anything to be a distraction from him. If my entire band showed up in tank tops on Sunday morning, I give you glory, glory. I give you, okay, get that out of your mind because in your mind right now, you're having an issue. But do you see what I'm saying? But when the guys come ready to go, they got their button down, they got their nice slacks, you know, you're not worried about that. You're worried, you're concerned with him. If I had ladies up here in revealing clothing in this already sexual generation that we live in at the fingertips, we're tempted at every turn, every billboard, every different commercial, all those things, shouldn't the house of the Lord at least be a place people can come to and not have to worry about that? So you'll see our ladies are modest. Our ladies take care of themselves. And look, that's because we don't want anything to distract from him. We're just a vessel. We're just a tool. We're just here not to put on a show or to entertain, but we're here to say, hey, come with us as we get into his presence with high praise. But I want to show you this. Paul is laying some groundwork here. You're not who you used to be. Now, for some of you, maybe you were raised differently. And maybe in the past, you know what? You and your teenage friends and the different ones, guess what? That's what you, you wanted to get in the mirror and you want to say, how hot do I look? What can I do to turn the boys' heads? Fellas, you wanted to get bulked up and guess what? You were going to go to the mall and you were going to wear whatever so you could walk around looking good and all those things. But that's not who you are now. It's not a shame to look good, but just do it modestly. And Paul's laying down some dress, uh, some dress code here. And he's given us some perspective that I want to give you to. Because you're not who you used to be. See, you don't talk the way you used to. Uh, you don't act the way you used to. You don't dress the way you used to. You don't react the way you used to. You are now a representative of Jesus Christ. And we must take notice of our behavior. So if the president... Or the governor, say Governor Stint called you and say, hey, I can't make this meeting. I need you to represent me in Washington, D.C. in front of the cabinet. I'll give you the talking points. I'll give you what to do. Guess what? You're going to take time. You're going to be prepared. You're going to be ready. And you're going to be looking good. Exactly. Does that make sense? Exactly. So here we are. I'm, go I'm finally going to settle the debate here. Colossians 3. Let's start it. Here we go. Paul's giving some instruction. Colossians 3 verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above. Not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears. Then you also will appear with him in glory. So this is what we have to do. We have to put to death spiritually. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, whatever your past was, those earthly natures, those earthly desires, we put those to death. And those things include sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to, someone say used to, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And, oh, did you hear that? Since you have taken off your old self, you've taken off who you used to be, what you used to be. You've taken those things off. And to put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, a Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all. 
and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, here it is. Get ready. Underline this. Clothe yourself. This is how you're supposed to dress. Get ready. Clothe yourself with compassion. Clothe yourself with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievous against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word, whether in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Such a great portion of scripture there in Colossians. It spells it out. How are we supposed to dress? Mm. Yeah, you thought I was going to talk about clothes more. But now we're switching to the spirit. We're switching to our attitude. Knowing that we are advocates and representatives of him. How we carry ourselves will make the difference to a, a lost and dying world. Colossians 3.12, one more time. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy You know what holy, right? Holy. Dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You see, because how unseemly it is for us as Christians to be dressed like something we're not. Why we decline to put on the beautiful wardrobe that the Lord has provided for us. So we take that old, dirty, uh, wretched, yucky clothes spiritually off and we say, Father, we're ready for our new white robe. And sometimes we get that rope stained from time to time. But, hey, he forgives us and he picks us back up. So the first item heaven dresses, uh, addresses on the list, it's not a tie, it's not a dress, it's not a certain hairstyle, but it's something called compassion. For God's idea of spiritual fashion and attractiveness begins with a tender-hearted pity. You see... A lot of times when there's nothing to gain, most people will look the other way. But I, I want to ask you this question this morning. If, if there happened to be a homeless person at the front of the church this morning, just imagine a homeless person in the front of the church as you were walking in, what would our response be? As we approach, would we grab our kids and maybe say, hey, why don't we go in this other door? Uh, maybe we just glance at them, uh, or maybe we would engage with them. I don't know. I think sometimes we get numb to it because we see it on every off-ramp and every exit. Somebody has a sign. And you, you wonder to yourself, is this legit? Do they really need help, or is this just a scheme? Is anybody with me? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And, and you have that debate and you say, Lord, help me here. Do I need to bless them? Do I need? I, I remember I had a, a bottle of water and, and I rolled down the window. I went to hand them the bottle of water. I said, oh, no, I don't want that. And walked away. I'm like, really? You know, so right then I'm like, wow. You know, it kind of took me off guard that I thought they would take it. But so let me ask you this this way. What if. You knew there was a news camera. It was recording your every move as you walked to the door. And and all of a sudden, not only is that homeless person there, but there's a camera recording your response that you're about to give. Then how would you respond? Because I want you to know this morning that someone more important than a camera crew is taking notice to our responses. And uh, I didn't have time to set this up at our church, but I want you to watch this, this video for the next few minutes of a church that went through this process.
the closer the person is to us and the less common the struggle, the easier it is to love. God forbid I find out my wife has three months to live. I quit my job, I quit everything, right? What if it's just an acquaintance of yours? And what if the problem's recurring? The more common and further from us, how common is homelessness? And how frequently is the homeless person someone dear to us personally? Never. So I took a few moments a couple of weeks ago and camped outside of a couple of our campuses and I wanted to see how we were doing you know when it's hardest to love do you know that your father in heaven is giving the same graces to the person that's hardest for you to love he's giving it He's giving, he doesn't play favors. He's giving the grace to everyone. And if we're gonna love like our Father in heaven loves, we don't get to play favorites. And by favorites, I mean so often we love the people where there's some benefit in it for us, right? Okay, 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 fine. I'll call my brother when I get home. I haven't talked to him for two years, but I'll call him, really, will you, will you? Because that's gonna work out pretty good for you, right? Now everything's going to be good with your brother. Your mom will get off your back, and your sister's not going to think you're a jerk anymore. And, and I mean, this is, but see, that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, do that. But not just that. Where it's not your favorite, where there's nothing in it for you, where it's not an upgrade to your portfolio of awesomeness. So how did our church do in the video? I'm going to tell you now. awesome. I, I was crying inside that beard. I cannot believe the people in this church. The number of people that prayed with me and brought me food. Just watch and see. something to eat this morning. Here's a coffee. A coffee to keep you warm. Let's just pray for you real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, so thankful, Lord, that you brought this man to your church on your day, Lord. We are so blessed that he is here. Lord, we pray for into this man and just bless him and love him. Bless you. Well, God, I just pray that you would just meet this man and, Father, that if it would be your will, that you would just have a um, him come into our church, but you just know the love of Christ. I don't want you to be out here without knowing him, okay? You're welcome to come inside. We'd love to have you. You right. can come in if you want. <laughs> That's all right. Bye. How you doing tonight? Doing okay? Would you like to come in and have church with us and sit with us for church? Is there any other people we pray for you or is it my... Alright, but I got some water for you. And uh, something more valuable. It's the word of God here. And God bless you. Is there anything I could be praying for for you, sir? Can I pray for you? Here. Uh, thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you for this beautiful day, and thank you for my friend here. I just pray that you be with him today. Uh, give him everything he needs. Provide for him. God, you are our provider. You love us, you care for us, and you love this man right here.
Matthew 9, 36 says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. You see, Jesus looked beyond people's surfaces and their appearance and even their sinful habits that dominated their lives. He saw into their hearts and felt compassion for their feeble, confused state. Many people feel discerning the faults of others equals spiritual maturity, but that's just not true. The real mark of a Christ-likeness Christian is to be stirred in our hearts by what others are going through. Not to be judgmental or you're not at my level or you're not who I need you to be. But that we embrace everybody at their own stage of life. I'll be honest. If there's somebody positioned there on a Sunday morning before all of you got here, probably my first fleshly response would be, we got to take care of this before the church gets here. Because if they see this person out front... They may be deterred to walk through these doors. But then the spiritual side needs to say, I need to focus on that one person that's never been here more than somebody that's been here 152 times. And if we're deterred to walk through these doors because there's somebody in need out in our doorsteps, Lord, don't write Ichabod on this place and shut it down. But speak to us and say, I've got one shot at this person. A, a busy week at different things, and, and somebody will ring that doorbell, and sometimes like, oh, God, I don't have time for this right now. That shouldn't be my heart. My heart should be this is that moment it, where we can just take a few moments. And it's hard. I get, I get it. You don't know their story. Hey, I broke down. I, I need gas. I need this. Well, where's your car? Well, y- you know, all those things that we go through on a weekly basis. And Pastor Josh has the first office, so he gets most of it. But he's wonderful at what he does. And he's compassionate. And I appreciate you. Amen. I got to hurry. <sighs> It is easy to give up on people when they continue to let you down, when they continue to sin and go down the wrong road. But let me ask you this. What if Christ responded that way towards you? What if he gave up on you every time you'd let him down and you sinned? But we are all from the same cesspool of sin, so take off the clothes of insi- in- insi- insensitivity. Take off the glasses of judgment and self-righteousness. And may we clothe ourselves in compassion. And that's including this young man right here. James 5.11 says, As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And may we be an overflow of our Heavenly Father. The next garment I want to talk to you about quickly is the, the garment of kindness. Kindness brings on a warmth and a softness to a spiritual appearance. The spirit of kindness gives the church, God blesses, a very inviting Chick-fil-A atmosphere. Can I have a refill, please? Would you like more ice? Absolutely. They get it back to me, and I always say, thank you. And they always say, my pleasure. Yes. Who doesn't like a kind person, right? Who doesn't like somebody that's sweet, that when they walk in the door, you know they're going to come in with a kind attitude? I love those people. On the other hand, is there anything more uncomfortable than being around a sour, bitter person whose words and actions reek of unkindness? But Jesus was kind and considerate with everyone he came in contact with. It's just the way he was. So we can know scripture, we can know all the scripture and doctrine and and many other spiritual things, but if we are unkind, we just blew our witness. He's not concerned about how much you know, but how you actually respond and react to what you know. You can quote all the scripture in the world, but if you don't act it out, if you don't live it, it's going to nullify what you know. Does that make sense? So Proverbs 11, 17 says, those who are kind benefit themselves. But the cruel will bring ruin on themselves. And 1 Thessalonians 5.15, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other. 1 Corinthians 13.4, love is, y'all quote this, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. 
It's not easy to be kind to ungrateful or wicked people. I get that. Because we are naturally repelled to them. If they're rude, if they, oh, I don't want to be around you. I, I'm going to dust off and get out of town, right? You know, <laughs> don't cast your pearls bef- before swine, you know. And, and if, if they don't uh, receive you, just Jesus said, get up and dust yourself off. And, you know, and I get that too. There's a time for that. But may we do our best to stay in the game. And even though people are paying us rudely and doing things to us, may we continue to be kind because it's a kind word that turns away wrath. Luke 6.35 says, but love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Have you ever had a, um, a flight that you were on get canceled? Isn't that just frustrating? Especially when you're trying to get there or when you're trying to get home and you really want to get home, right? And they cancel your flight. Well, that happened to me one time. And um, we were actually on the plane and we had to disembark and get off. And everybody had to line up to get rebooked. Well, I watched. I was about 20 people back probably. And I watched. They were just hammering this young lady. Just, I can't believe you canceled the flight. I've got to get here. And it, it was not a kind moment. And I'm just looking at this lady. She's doing the best she can to get these 150 people rebooked and different ones. And even though I wanted to get home, I said, okay, I'm going to try to do better. So I walked up to her, and I, I don't know why I said this. I said, so how are you today? What a <laughs> dumb question. <laughs> she just looked at me like, just let me, come here. And uh, she said, where are you trying to go? And, and I gave her my, my information. But I just was nice, and I was just sweet to her. And uh, you know what? She gave me my ticket. I didn't even think anything of it. I waited the two, three hours, whatever it was. I got on the plane, and I was by myself, got on the plane. And wouldn't you know, I was in a first-class seat. (laughs) You know how many times I've been in a first-class seat? One One time. (laughs) But I've done it. I've done it. My favorite part is when at the end of your meal, they give you a hot towel. I didn't even know what it was for. I'm like, what's this for? (laughs) Refresh your face. Okay. So you just never know. That little kindness that uh, not everybody else is dishing out. God just may give you a hook a brother up. Amen. So the first thing we got is what? Compassion. Second one's kindness. Next clothing tip is we got to put on some humility. God loves the humble, but he doesn't like the proud. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. See, every talent we have, every success in life, it has all come from his gracious hand. In the church, God blesses must always maintain a humble position before God and man. See, any feeling of superiority that we might have, uh, that, that kind of that attitude of we're the best church around, we're, we got this all figured out, or arrogance will quickly grieve the Holy Spirit. That's the last thing we want to do because Psalms 25, 9 simply says this. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. So the first secret to receiving guidance from God is a humble spirit because 1 Peter 5, 5 says in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with Humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. All you parents that are raising a teenager right now, you need to underline that scripture when they're giving you a hard time. Say, hey, honey, can you read 1 Peter 5, 5? In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to mom and dad. This is the mom and dad version. And uh, clothe yourselves with humility, youngster. Amen. But you all do that already because we got the greatest kids in, in the world. Amen. And Bethesda, can we give our kids a hand? They're amazing. Humility is probably the rarest article of spiritual clothing found among people of God. I, I just think that's true sometimes. We, we're sometimes not the greatest people when it comes to humility. Because the same thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven likes to creep into our lives. He was prideful. And so we're born with that. We're born. And, and there, there's a good pride that we can have. We can be proud of our kids or we can be proud of an accomplishment. Or we can be proud of our country. And when we stand at attention or put our hand over our chest, we can be full of pride for what we're part of, right? But I love our worship team because 
I, I've, I've heard you guys many times, and somebody will come up to you and say, hey, you guys did so good this morning. And every time I hear somebody respond, oh, thank you so much, hey, it's all about him. It's all about him. Um, I've got one of my musicians that every time I try to give him a compliment, he just says, well, I'm just a tool in God's toolbox. And that's really how, how we should be. Lord, use me. It's not about this or that, but it's about your presence and your spirit and our humility, because when we humble ourselves, he'll lift us up and his spirit will come. But see, pride is like a junkyard dog that can feed on anything, including the blessings of God. Sometimes the blessings of God start to come in, and, and we just feed on that. Oh, man, I've really got things going now. I'm really doing things good. Oh, this promotion I got. Man, I'm a hard worker. I got this figured out. And God's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. acknowledge me in all things. Seek me first. You got there because I opened the door. Don't forget. Amen. Philippians 2, 6 and 8, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality uh, with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself, this is Jesus, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. I found early in youth ministry a lot of people want the microphone. But when it came time to clean up or stack chairs, you couldn't find them. And I believe in my heart here, if um, gospel Christian music wasn't the key to God's heart, I think country music would be a close second. And I know that's wrong. But I can't help how the Lord designed me. And I like some good country music if it's wholesome. And there's a young man by the name of Tim McGraw that says it this way. Talking about humility. Hold the door. Say please. Say thank you. Don't steal. Don't cheat and don't lie. I know you've got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. When the dreams you're dreaming come to you, when the work you put is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. How many of you have that little in your, in your, in your head right now? I apologize. Let's get it out of that. Uh, uh, it's a small world after all. It's a small world. At You're welcome. You'll be singing it all day. Only 24 more pages. The spirit of Pastor Dacus is upon this place. Amen. Love you, Pastor. I love you. He was messing with us. He said, man, this is my last week to preach for a month. I got to get it all in. You did. You did. Amen. We're crossing over. We, we've crossed over. We just want to let you know how many have crossed over. Amen. You crossed over. Amen. Amen. You know, heaven puts an emphasis on this next garment. It's called gentleness. Gentleness is the opposite of harshness. When things don't work out and the bottom falls out, that's where gentleness comes in. When the kid spills the drink, how do we react? Um, I don't know about you, but I'm still a big kid at times that spills. Do I have any other big kids out there that I just did it last week? The water went, Phew. But how do we react to that? They already feel terrible, right? And we either jump them or we say, baby, it's okay. Let's get some cloths. Amen. May I be the one to say, hey, baby, it's okay. Let's get some cloths. <laughs> it's God's grace that helps us accept these disappointments, large or small, so that we can move on in an attitude of gentleness, exhibiting trust and meekness. But how did Jesus do it? Because I want you to picture this. While he was teaching, while he was teaching, while he was preaching, while he was pouring his heart out, in the outskirts and the phrase of the crowd, the religious leaders on the edge, they would plot his demise. Yet he stayed on message while under constant attack. As he was preaching, he would have people just over in the distance whispering, we're going to kill him. We're going to get rid of him. We're going to destroy him. But he said, I got to stay on track. I got to stay focused on what God's called me to do. And let me tell you, when you are working God's plan and perfect will for your life, you will have people in the corners talking about you. 
You'll have them trying to discourage you to get you off point, but you got to get your eyes off them and keep them on them because they need you. Don't fold your tent because you've got some people that are trying to dis- distract you, but stay gentle, stay kind. How do we respond to tough situations with gentleness or harsh anger? And I haven't always been the best at this, but I'm striving. Back to my affair at the heart story. Um, if you haven't been there, it's quite a treat. You see, I tell Amy often, um, and I, I, I told her Friday, I, Friday's my day off. If I don't respond to you on Friday sometimes, it's, I, I try to do my best. Um, me and Pastor Josh don't always do this, uh, but we try to take Fridays off to be with our families. Um, but so I, early in the morning, I said, hey, hey, Amy, you want to go to the affair of the heart? I said, it's going on today. And she said, yeah, I want to go. And um, because I, she, she'll take one for the team. Hey, will you go to the Thunder game with me? She doesn't want to go to the Thunder game. She'll go watch people and fellowship. She could care less about the Thunder game, but she's a team player. So I said, hey, you want to go to the affair of the heart? Because I tell her weekly, hey, Amy, all my dreams, my dream is to make all your dreams come true. Does anybody, guys, you can use that. Use it, take it, take it. So we go to the affair of the heart. And before we even get in the doors, we park a mile away. We're walking, and I see these ladies with these weapons. They've got these carts. They're playing bumper carts before we even get in the place. And then you get in the aisles, and you can't even walk up and down the aisles hardly because there's so many of these carts. And then they buy these brooms that sweep up everything. And now they've got, like, javelins sticking out. And they got these ladders sticking out of their carts. And they got these stakes with uh, happy fall, y'all, everywhere. And there's, there's all kinds of stuff, man. And then the cinnamon roll line was out the door. It was crazy how many people wanted the cinnamon rolls. And, uh, but anyways... What was I? Why, how did I even bring that up? <laughs> yeah, my body armor. Oh, I saw, I saw this shirt at the Affair of the Heart. That's what it was. And if you have this, if this is your mantra, if this is who people think you are, we need to clothe you in something different. There's a shirt that says, I'm the crazy ant they warned you about. <laughs> if that brings pride to you, if you love, if you would order that shirt, If you're the crazy uncle that pastor talks about in his messages at the reunions that people tolerate, don't be that guy. But, man, be that aunt that all the kids, that the nieces and nephews can't wait to go to Dave and Buster's with. Andy Alligator aunt, be that aunt and uncle. Amen. I can't wait to go spend time with my aunt or my uncle. Not the enforcer aunt or uncle. Well, if something needs to get done in my family, they call me because they know I'll get it done. If I need something exchanged at Walmart and they won't do it, you just send me in there. I'll get you your money back. Do any of you have family members like that? Keep those hands down. You're smart. If that's a badge of honor that you're the enforcer, please take this message to heart today and be the sweet Anna. You you got Thanksgiving next month. Change in the name of Jesus. All right, lastly, here we go. We're coming home. We need to put on patience. Oh, I don't like that word. Man, I want my answers now. How many of you have ever put an application in for a job and it's like, are they going to call today? And you're just waiting. And you're like, Lord, please. You know, you go to the drive-thru, you want it now, you want it your way. Amazon, it wasn't good enough to get it next day, now you get it the same day. It wasn't good enough to actually get exercise and go get your groceries, now they bring it to your car. I just wonder sometimes. Convenience. And then you go to a third world country where they walk 10 miles to get water. And now we got to have Grubhub because we can't even go to the restaurant anymore and spend time with the family. We got to have them deliver it. I don't know. It's just something I deal with. But I want to introduce you to a, uh, some of you are daisies in this house and some of you are coopers. So after this video, you decide if you're a daisy or a cooper. Go ahead. We just went through the drive-up window. What did we get, Cooper? Daisy, what did we get at the drive-up window? No, Cooper, let Daisy have some. 
No, Cooper. Daisy, where'd we go? <gasps> Did we go to McDonald's? Coop. No. Daisy gets hers first. Why does Daisy get hers first? Because Cooper eats his too fast. If you're married to a Cooper, stand to your feet right now. We're going to have prayer for you. Amen. I'm sorry, I can't see in the overflow. It's too dim. It's too dim. <laughs> it's true, man. When we go to get dessert, man, Amy's like, oh, we'll just share. Oh, I'll say, we'll just share. She said, you won't share. She won't share. I'm not good. I'm not good. You know, patience is perfectly matched mate to gentleness and involves being long-suffering with others. But it's hard to have patience with life issues sometimes, with family members uh, waiting for the answer that we want to receive. But we need to run quickly to God's wardrobe and put on patience. The church God blesses quickly realizes how patient God has been with us. Even among Christians, there will sometimes be problems and hurts. How many know that? But this is why Paul wrote in Colossians 3.13, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. He's been very patient with each one of us. May we give the same patience. So let's just be real for a minute. How many know brothers and sisters fight? How many know brothers and sisters disagree? It's just the way it is. But at the end of the day, you've got the same blood, and you humble yourselves, and you pray it through, and you get back together. And I'm praying for you, if maybe that's your family dynamic right now, that I pray that those walls will start to soften. As you lead in patience and humility and gentleness and kindness and all these things, that they'll take your lead and they'll follow suit. But my question is this, how can we reach those on the outside of the church when we're busy devouring our own brothers and sisters inside of the church? So may we be the mature ones this morning and put on the garment of patience. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. Because if we're going to reach them, we've got to figure it out in here. Because of visitors and different ones come in and, and they feel dissension and they feel divide, uh, they'll look at that. That's not a healthy situation. And, but I'm thankful we're part of a healthy church. And I'm thankful that we have pastors that navigate through those situations and take care of them when they need to be taken care of. Amen. Let's live together in unity and harmony so we can reach those outside these four walls. 1 Thessalonians 5.14, as we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, it, but encourage the dishearted, help the weak, but be patient with hard word here. You know what everyone means in the Greek and Hebrew? Everyone. So how patient has God been with you and me? I love this analogy I saw this week. It says this. So imagine this. You're holding a cup of coffee. When someone comes along and bumps into you or shakes your arm, making you spill your coffee everywhere, why did you spill the coffee? Well, someone bumped into me. Of course. Wrong answer. You spilled the coffee because there was coffee in your cup. Had there been tea in your cup, you would have spilled tea. Whatever's inside the cup is what will spill out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which will happen, whatever is inside of you will come out. It's easy to fake it until you get rattled. So we have to ask ourselves this question this morning, what is in our cup? When life gets tough, what spills over? The fruit of the Spirit? I hope so. Joy, gratefulness, peace, humility. Or is it anger, bitterness, harsh words, and reactions? You have to choose this morning. So today, let's work towards filling our cups with God's Holy Spirit, spilling out gratitude, forgiveness, joy, words of affirmation, and kindness, gentleness, and love for others. So I ask yourself, from this day forward, when life shakes you and me, what will we allow to come out of us? 
I pray this morning that our reactions will consist of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Uh, I truly believe this is one of the reasons why God has continued to bless Bethesda all these years is because we have had pastors and leaders that have modeled these qualities. They've had compassion for us. They've had kindness for us. They've carried themselves in humility, and they've been gentle. And God knows they've been patient. So thank you to all the pastors that have led this, uh, this, uh, these qualities uh, for 75 years. So thankful for them. So who's ready to make an impact? Amen. Who's ready to make an impact? Pastor Josh and me drive the van probably more than anybody. And sometimes when I'm driving, I think, oh, I can't honk right now. I'm in the church van. Because <laughs> you just want to lay on it, right? You just, oh, can't believe you, you didn't just cut me off. You know, the people that, uh, yeah, you know, when traffic gets busy and you get in line like everybody else, but then you get that other person that just goes and then at the last minute they go, oh, no, you didn't. What's more important in your life than my life? And you want to honk, and they go, no, I'm in the church van. So I, I come to, we're going to put Bethesda Church on every one of your vehicles. When you leave today, every one of them's wrapped with Bethesda. Just, that's not a good idea, because some of you would still honk, amen. But we need to make an impact. Take a quick look at this video as we close. When we're laying on our deathbed, you're not going to worry about how much money you had, how much power you had, how much prestige. You're going to see that that was all game, that that was all an illusion. The only thing that's going to matter is the impact you had on other people's lives. We are all on a separate journey. But the beautiful thing about our life here on this earth is at my funeral, they ain't going to talk about my success. They're going to talk about who Nick was and how Nick lived and how Nick loved and encouraged. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success, it's having an impact. It's knowing you haven't walked the planet in vain. It's knowing that because you've been here, you've blessed lives, you've developed people, and you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart and all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. Life is a mirror. And life gives us not what we want. Life gives us who we are. When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. Musicians, please. So when we look at that, wow. Gavin, come here, come here real quick, buddy. So my question, what, what are you wearing today? What are you wearing? Because Gavin, handsome, good-looking dude. Love this kid. But Gavin, let's do this. You know what would make that shirt pop? This jacket. Put it on. Let's try it on. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, baby. Look at this guy. He's handsome. You like that? You want to preach? Ooh, all of a sudden, I'm a little chilly right now. Pastor Josh, could I see that jacket, please? Thank you.
Thank you, buddy. You go, oh, thank you. You're going to love the way you look. Oh, thank you, buddy. Yeah, baby. How we look? How do we look? <laughs> Amen. We look ridiculous. Because pastor would say many times when we sin, when we disobey, when we act a fool, he'll just simply look at us and say, you know what? That doesn't look good on you. And he's not talking about our clothing. He's just talking about the way we're portraying ourselves and that anger, that disobedience, that whatever it is. You get it. So why don't I give this back to Pastor Josh, who it looks amazing on? And why don't I take this back? Because guess what? This is my size. Okay. And for Christmas, mom and dad are going to buy you a jacket that you can wear on Christmas, Christmas Sunday, okay? And we can't wait to see what it looks like, okay? And Uncle Dave and Aunt Sandra may chip in and help. Okay, all right. Thank you, buddy. Give my man a hand. So put on what God has given to you, not what somebody else has put on you. Dress the way that God wants you to, spiritually, physically, all the above. Because, see, today we're going to take off the garment of unconcern and apathy. We're going to take off the garment of anger and meanness. We're going to take off the garment of pride and arrogance. We're going to take off the garment of brutality and harshness. And once and for all, take off the garment of impatience and irritation because it doesn't look good on you. And it's not a good representation of our Heavenly Father. So would you stand to your feet this morning? And with every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe you're here this morning and say, Pastor Michael, thank you for bringing Colossians 3 to me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And man, I never looked at it that way. I, I just kind of go throughout my day and I just do what I do and I am who I am, and but I've realized today that when I get bumped and the stuff starts to spill out of my life, it, it, it's, not, it's not the right stuff. But today, I choose you. I choose for your spirit to work through me, and I, I choose God to yield myself to you. So if that's you this morning, say, hey, Pastor Michael, thank you for this encouraging word and challenging me in this. And I'm going to leave this place, but with the mindset, I'm going to do better with how I react, how I respond, and spiritually what I wear. And if that's you this morning, no one looking around, just say, hey, I'm going to work on this because I need to. Because my kids are watching, the world's watching, my coworkers are watching. And I need help on how I respond. Would you simply just acknowledge that to the Lord right now? Just lift your hand and say, that's me. Hey, my hand's up. My hand's up. My hand's up. Repeat this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Give me a heart of compassion. Give me a heart of kindness. Give me a heart of humility. Give me a heart of gentleness. And Lord, give me patience to overcome any obstacle that may come my way. Thank you for coming and living in my life, forgiving me of my sins, and giving me a fresh start on October 20th, 2019. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can you give the Lord praise, amen?